Hi, I'm Bob Klotz reporting on our environment. There's been a great deal of legislative action in the state of Maine as the 125th legislature has drawn to a close. There's also been a great deal of activist action with a great deal more planned. Unfortunately, there's a lot that was frustrating coming out of the legislature. A particular irritant for me, as reported previously, was the approval of the resolution by the State House and Senate in support of the Keystone XL pipeline, a totally partisan and politically motivated move that I've now discovered is going on around the country in numerous other states. The pattern is all too obvious. You remember Alec, right? Then there's the approval for funding for the East-West Highway. Though we don't have any money to take care of our own legislature, approved $300,000 in corporate welfare, essentially for Canada. The Norwich Walk dump has received authorization to go in the wrong direction and expand, reinforcing people's not in my backyard, it's only trash, where the hell is Norwich Walk attitude. Bills to overhaul the Land Use Regulation Commission are in limbo, which is basically another way of saying, give them some more time to ensure that the agency gets gutted. And then there's LD 1853, the infuriatingly named, an act to improve environmental oversight and streamline permitting for mining in Maine, sponsored by Representative John Martin. George Orwell is high speed spinning in his grave out of frustration that even he could not write such appalling doublespeak. This bill, which should have been named the way life should be if we were West Virginia, was passed on a 22 to 13 vote in the Senate and 78 to 65 in the House. I'm pretty sure I know where the legislators who voted for this bill should be when they blow the top of the mountain off. The goal being to make it easier for the grab of gold and silver and other precious metals stored in Bald Mountain. The seven absent from the House vote might have been too overwhelmed by the report of 300 jobs to be present for the vote. Or maybe they were looking into ways to protect those very same workers and the residents in the area from the toxic waste and polluted water that will occur with the improved mining. Then there's the bigger picture, both in Maine, nationally, and globally. In a segment in show number seven, I referred to the amount of pollution encountered on what should have been a pristine beach. The following images, though quite disturbing, reinforce in graphic ways the profound message that the earth is trying to get us to wake up, and that Bill McKibben, as in his new book, E-Earth, is trying to speak to. McKibben purposely misspelled the word earth. He added an additional A, reinforcing that we have purposely, consciously or unconsciously, mistreated the earth in such a way as to have fundamentally and irrevocably changed it. The earth that you and I were born into is no longer. It's as if we now inhabit in an entirely different planet, E-Earth. Birds aren't even birds anymore. They are plastic, ingesting, and choking on our waste creatures that fall to the ground and rot, revealing our responsibility for the absurdity of our destruction. Years ago, in reviewing the data that at least 50% of the loons in Maine were unable to rep reproduce anymore due to the impact of toxins, I was in conversation with a neurologist, somebody who should know better. His response to what he apparently considered to be an extreme overreaction to such data was, I feel that nature can compensate. Here's compensate, or actually not. I don't want compensate. I want access to, in a sustainable way, an environment that supports me and all living things and that I support. I don't want to have to turn in my professional life to a young pregnant woman and suggest that she eat tuna because it's a good source of protein. It's not. It's a swimming mercury thermometer. I might as well tell her to go home and take the mercury out of her compact fluorescent light bulb and consider it a supplement. There is no recommended daily allowance of mercury. And clearly, given the evidence of the impact of neurotoxins all around us, we've got way too much of this stuff in our systems already. But the powers that be, which by the way is in the land of for, of, and by the people is supposed to be us, in that land, these powers are intent on denying these realities. It is truly way down the rabbit hole, and it's the ultimate in fantasy to suggest otherwise. And did I hear somebody suggest that it's about jobs? Now that's the ultimate in the look over there approach. 
It's not about jobs. It's about profits and greed and the long-term destruction of our planet for the short-term gain of the few. This is fundamentally what Occupy is about. What else is Occupy about? Action. And I want to remind you of some of the efforts there. According to President Nasheed of the Maldives, a country predicted soon to be underwater due to climate change related sea level rise, I don't hope, I work. Here's a renewed call for more work. The legislature's out, they're coming back, there's work for us to do. All of us, together, it's the only way. And we need to play and sleep because it can all feel so serious. Here's some opportunities coming up. From April the 23rd through May the 1st, uh, many Occupy participants and others throughout the state will be hiking from Portland to Augusta for the main Earth Walk. On May the 5th, 350.org will have their Global Climate Impact Day where they connect the dots throughout the globe and in the state of Maine regarding current and future climate change. I intend to review these events and other recent Earth Day events, including the Hope Festival in Bangor and the Portland Urban Earth Day in future segments.